Hello, 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 my friends, and welcome in to the Purple Penguin Craft Room. I'm Vicki. Uh, today is going to be a really simple craft today. Um, a little sewing involved, unless you want to do glue, um, but um, super cute and uh, super easy, and can be used as a gift as well, if, uh, if you so choose. Uh, and that's going to be for Thanksgiving. This one is going to be geared towards Thanksgiving. However, this is something you could do year-round for whatever occasion or whatever season or just whatever. Um, it's going to be um, hot mitts. We're going to use uh, hot mitts or oven mitts, whatever you want, whatever you guys call them. Um, I usually say hot mitts. Um, and for the oven, when you're grabbing something hot, you know, you want protection for your hands. Um, so we'll just kind of quickly go over what I'm using and then uh, we'll get started. Um, so using two hot mitts because you know I've got two hands I don't know about you guys I have a left hand and a right hand <laughs> and these are universal these are from the Dollar Tree you can get these anywhere um, absolutely anywhere I, I got these at the Dollar Tree individually they're a dollar 25 right now uh, for each one and then I got the, the just the hand ones um, so these obviously don't go on your hand, but it comes in two squares. And these are also from the Dollar Tree. Um, again, these were $1.25, but you get the two of them already. So you kind of get a set of four is what I, I usually do. And that's just my personal preference. Um, in my kitchen, I like to have the option of left or right. Sometimes I use both, uh, depending on what I'm cooking. If it's a big thing, I want both my hands to pull that out of the oven for protection. Uh, if it's something small, sometimes I use these just for something quick. Um, if I'm setting something on the counter, um, I use these. So we're going to be using, again, four of these. We are, like I said, gearing this towards uh, Thanksgiving. So I'm using Thanksgiving ribbon. So we're using, oh, if it's not upside down, thankful. And I got this at Michael's. And then we are using, aren't these so cute? Super cute. Let me see if I can get it to where you can see it. So cute. Little turkeys. Little turkeys. I absolutely love these. I got this from Hobby Lobby, um, obviously around Thanksgiving time. I don't know if they carry this year round, or not year round, but every year. Um, they may change it up, but you can find, you know, Thanksgiving ribbon. You're going to have to use Thanksgiving ribbon. If you have a friend or a family member or something, you want to give, you know, these as a gift. Um, maybe their kitchen uh, is cows or chickens or, you know, just plain black and white or plain whatever color. Um, they could be like lime green or red or whatever. A lot of people like to customize their kitchens. And that would be some kind of a fun gift um, for housewarming, you know, whatever that this could be um, a fun project for. So, without delay, let's get started. Okay. We're going to get started with the oven mitt one, and then we'll jump over and we're going to do the, the hand one, the squares. All right? So, first things first, you have to decide, uh, personal preference, if you want your mitt to look like this or like this. And um, there's a couple different decisions you need to make on that. And that is, um, I'll just tell you, for me personally, I hang this little hang part. I hang up my oven mitts. So they hang this way. So anything that I do, um, I like it to go in this direction. Um, because when I hang it, then you get, it looks the right way. If, however, you just set them in the in a you know in a drawer or you know off to the side, you may want it may be more appealing uh, for the eye to to see the like an actual mitt going this way with this collar around it. So it's all about personal preference or who you're making it for. Um, you just kind of have to think about that um, and just giving you ideas. On, um, and showing you how I would make this for myself. And then, um, but I'm also giving you ideas as far as um, things to think about if you're making this for somebody else, okay? So that, that's one decision you have to make. 
the next decision you have to make, if you are using this specific um, oven mitt, it does not go straight across on the bottom. It does this little angle thing. So then you have to decide if you want your, your ribbon to go with, with, with the edge or if you want it to go straight across. I, personal preference, I like going straight across and I'm okay with this being at an angle. And the reason I say that too, also a second decision is, um, are you doing this front and back? Are you just doing this on one side? Um, if you are only doing one side, it's not gonna matter. Um, you, again, you just need to decide if you want it along the edge or if you want it straight across. However, when I do mine, I like to them to be on the front and the back. So I like to take my ribbon, start it here and wrap it around so that it meets the other side, like so. And that's why I like going straight across is because this lines up with this, this will line up with this. However, if you're doing this particular thing, keeping it together and doing the same thing, if you do it like so, you will probably end up with this little, I mean, it, it, it will be like this little bunch up here on this side. You'll have a little, a little bunch. If you cut it and then just sew it individually and still do it each side, you're not going to have this little extra weird part. So it's just those are things to think about when you're doing this project. So there is some thought that needs to be involved before you get started. Um, again, I am doing this for Thanksgiving for myself, um, but if I was giving this as a gift, um, I would think about um, what do I think the person that I'm giving this to, how do I think they would like it, um, how do I do, do I know how their kitchen is set up, if they hang their their oven mitts or if they just shove them in a drawer, um, you know, or leave them on the counter, whatever, that kind of thing. So um, it, just kind of some things, like I said, some things to think about. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this because I am actually doing this project for myself. So I am going to go ahead and just do straight across. So I can wrap around, start at one end and then wrap it around and end up at the same end at this side, like so. And this uh, ribbon actually lines up because thankful works out to being in the middle when I do it that way. So that actually works out even, even better. So again, I'm gonna do this for me. So let me switch this around so that I can see it for myself here how I'm doing this. So, okay, like I said, we're gonna start at this side, around. Like I said, this would make a great gift for, for that baker friend that you have or anything like that, um, or, you know, a relative, something simple. Look at that. Again, um, this ribbon, the specific ribbon, has a wire in it. Not all ribbon comes with wire in it, some do, some don't. If you pinch it at the top where you cut it, hold it down here and push. You'll see the little ribbon or the little wire will pull, be able so you can grab it and you just want to pull it out. And I, I just, you can leave it in. It's not going to hurt anything to leave it in. Personal preference, I take it out. So. We've got our wire like this. It's just a little itty bitty soft wire. We'll do the same thing with this side. Pull it out. All right, now I'm also being conscious of this little loop thing. Um, so I want the ribbon to go underneath that so that doesn't interfere with it either. So we're going down a little bit further than just to make it, and this, this part just doesn't bother me at all. I'm okay with that. So now we want to line up 
I want to try and match up this with this seam here on the inside. And so I think I want to be able to put this around. Oh, I can move it because it's not totally centered here. So we can move it down a little bit. I can line it up like that. Let's just test it out here. And then I will just have to cut some at the end here because this is overhang. But we'll, we'll start with the one side and we'll wrap it around first. So we're going to see where the seam is, like so. We we'll want it kind of in that seam. And I'm just using the um, all-purpose um, uh, thread. This is a dark brown, just because I kind of wanted dark brown. I already threaded a needle for myself here. Let's see if I, hopefully I didn't knot it up. <laughs> I might have. I think I did. Okay, we're good. Again, I messed up. I should do some pins on it. Um, might actually help hold it together here. If you have uh, pins to help hold things together, I would highly recommend using them. Like I said, I'm not a sewer. I do actually have pins to help hold things, but I just don't have them handy with me. So I'm just kind of going with it. We're just going to knot it here at the end. Because I want to start it down here. Gonna double knot this to hold it in place. Now we're just going to go up and grab some of it, wrap it around, then we're going to go down in this, grab the fabric portion of it. You don't have to go all the way through, just grab some fabric and keep it towards the end here. basically just going in and out, in and out, grabbing um, some of the fabric in the end of our ribbon here. Trying to keep it towards the end so you don't see too much of the stitching, but you know it is on the side if it gets, you know, if somebody sees it. You know, it is handmade. It's okay. You can glue this too if you want to glue this. I would not recommend hot glue um, only because it is going to be around hot objects. Um, but there is a fabric hot glue. Um, I have never used it so I can't really say I can recommend it because I've never used it. Um, not that I'm opposed to it, it's just that I've never used it so I can't recommend something I've never used before. Alright, so this is attached. It's not going anywhere. We're going to wrap this around and make sure this stays nice and smooth on this side and make sure we line up here. Perfect. We do. So and then I want to go ahead and cut off some of my excess here. My excess.
And then we want to do the same thing to keep this here. And this just helps keep everything all lined together. So again, we just want to grab this. You may want to kind of fold it over here. I mean, and there really is not really a long way to do this. You just kind of weave in and out and up and down. Uh, as long as you make sure that you're attaching the ribbon portion with some of the fabric, you should be good to go. You might, uh, when picking out your thread, you might want to make sure your thread kind of matches with your ribbon or at least matches your fabric on your mitt. This is actually lining up really good. And actually, it wasn't even that planned, but it's actually, look at how well that lines up. Pretty impressive with myself there. You could totally do this with a sewing machine if you're really good with a sewing machine. Uh, I, however, I do have a larger sewing machine, so I'd really just, this is just something small and easy. This is not straight, I'm going to just off that. This is something fun I like to do. Um, all right, so there we go. So we got it tied on there. At this point, you could leave this if you want, so you could tuck things in if you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sew this together. So I still have quite a bit of thread, so we're just going to keep on going. Since I'm on this side here, we're just going to stay really here. Make sure I get my corner in here. Good. So basically all I'm going to do is go down. I'm going to stay as close as I can to the edge here. Go down, go through the fabric, and then back up through the ribbon like so. So it attaches it. So, so this is attached down. You don't have to go all the way through this. You don't have to go all the way through and then back up. You can, this is actually thick enough, you can just catch the top layer and you'll be totally fine. It doesn't, it doesn't need to catch the entire thing. And I, I space mine out probably a good, let's say finger width probably is probably good enough. You don't have to, you don't have to do super tight stitches, I mean unless you want to. It's totally up to you as far as how how tight you want your stitching to be. And then sometimes, depending on the ribbon, you may actually want to see the stitching. If you want to see the detailed stitching, you could actually um, go a little bit further in so you can see the detailed stitching. If you want the stitching to look thicker, uh, you can double up your, um, your thread or you could even use um, floss. You wanted to use floss instead of thread. Um, I wouldn't probably recommend all six strands of the floss, but you can separate floss. Typically they have what six strands I believe. Um, and you can um, you can separate it so that it's thicker than thread but yet um, you know not the entire floss thing. 
strand, I guess. And then like so. So we have, so you, this, you can't get underneath. It's holding it down like this. This is, I mean, you can almost do it like this and make a pocket. This could totally be a pocket if you wanted to stick like recipes or something in there. That'd be kind of fun. This might be something fun to kind of just sit on the couch and put together real quick. I mean, it's not super difficult and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do. So this is what, you know, if you're having like a last minute, uh, you need a last minute gift or something, um, this would totally be something that, you know, you might want to keep a couple of these. They come in different colors, the mitts. Go to your Dollar Tree and uh, grab a couple of different colors just to have on hand. And then um, if you have like a bunch of ribbon like I do in my stash, you know, you're set. Okay, I'm going to end this because this is done. I'm going to restart and do um, this side as well. So I have so I have both sides down, but I am running out of thread, so I'm just going to end this, just tying it off a couple knots. You kind of want to end this down here, like so. There you go. Like, how elegant does that look? It looks so pretty versus plain. So, this is how it started. And now, look at how fancy and simple. All right, now let's move on and we'll do these guys. These are just the squares. Like I said they also have the little hooks. Um, I am going to leave the tags. Um, this is just care instructions. Um, not a bad idea. Um, or if you want to just, you know, take a picture of this, put it on a little card maybe for care instructions. If you think this looks kind of cheesy, you can take that off. Um, but definitely let people know what the care instructions are on these because if you wash them, they are washable. But if you dry them, uh, they shrink and shrivel and it looks terrible. <laughs> uh, just give me a heads up on that. These I thought was super cute if I did a different ribbon. I have this little turkey ribbon. How cute is that? Love this little turkey ribbon. And I'm only going to do one side. I'm just going to do one side of this. I don't necessarily think I need to do both sides. I'm going to just do one side. So I just got a side. I think I want it in the middle, but you could totally just do it along the top. You do it along the bottom. Um, I'm just going to do mine just straight in the middle, I think. Um, and then I got to decide how much of the turkeys I want to see. Because if I just start the turkey on this side, I get half a turkey on this side. So in picking your ribbon, um, you just have to decide where, you know, eye pleasing. What is it going to look like when it's done? You know, um, that kind of thing. So I think I want as many turkeys as I can that are whole. And I, I like I like that. Just the tips of the turkey will be on the sides. So that's okay. This ribbon does not have a uh, wire in it. There's no wire in this ribbon. So that's easy. Makes it easy. So we want to go all the way to here. And then I'm going to cut right about the tip of the other tail. 
perfect. Absolutely perfect. Again, you have to decide if you want it to go this way with your little hanger piece up here. So again, if it's hanging, that's the way it's going to go. Or, you know, you could go this way and have it to where the hanger is down here. Um, however, on this, that it's a little more eye-pleasing to have the hanger piece always at the top. But again, it's going to be personal preference, uh, something that you're going to have to decide. So on this one, I've got a light brown that kind of kind of blends in a little bit. So this is a light brown thread. Again, it's just an all-purpose. You know, you can get thread anywhere. You can even get your thread at Walmart. Walmart has thread. Um, you can even get it at grocery stores, have small spools of thread, you know, wherever. Um, just going to start at this end. I go grab some of the fabric and the corner of my ribbon here. I'm going to tie a knot, hold it in place, get it started. Grab the end here. We're just going to make a double knot. So to hold it in place. I might even do a triple knot. Oh, I know. Just the trick is to make sure we keep it, keep it lined up here. And start at the end here. So hold it in place. And out. This ribbon actually might fray, so I'm going to try and go in a little bit further than I might normally, um, just to help make sure it doesn't fray on me. I'm just I'm just grabbing, make sure I grab some fabric and the ribbon. Not going on. Okay, that through that. Again, you can totally do this on a sewing machine. Totally up to you. I guess it's all about your skill level and how you comfortable you feel with sewing. Um, again, you may not want to sew at all. Um, I know some people have arthritis and are not able to even to sew because they can't grab needles. Um, I would recommend uh, then a glue, like a fabric glue would probably be the best bet and the easiest thing to do. Just because you have uh, some disabilities or some trouble doing something doesn't mean you can't find other ways of doing it. All right. So we've got this, that's that's on there, that's not going anywhere. We want to go down to the other side. So again, we're just going to kind of do this, up and down, up and down. If you have any questions with this, definitely um, drop me a message and uh, let me know what your questions are if you have any questions for this. And I can definitely try and help you out. is to just try to keep it as straight as I can here. Again, you just have to decide if you how much of stitching you want to see. And you I'm not going through completely. I'm not going through so you're not going to see anything on this side because I'm not going through completely. I'm just going under this first little layer kind of situation that's got going on here. Alright, well, 
like I said, this is not, not a super long, it does seem like it kind of takes a little bit of its time. But this can be like a fairly quick project. Alright, we made it to the other side, now we're just going to attach this down. There we go, all attached. Now we still just have this side here. And then we just do the same exact thing. Just run it down the side. And then you notice to end it, or just ending it back where I started it actually, we're just going to tie it off in a knot. There we go. And we're all set. Super fun, and you can do with one hot. So we've got the square, 
in a mitt and they can totally to go together. How cute is that? So definitely, if you like what you see, come back and let me know um, and let other people know that you saw Purple Penguin Craft Room. Happy crafting.